what a beautiful day to get out in the woods. This is awesome. Nothing fancy here in the Rocky Mountains. We're gonna go do a snow hike. Allie's suited up, ready to go. She doesn't have her winter coat, so she's got kind of her uh, rain jacket on to keep her warm. Huh, dog? She loves the snow. You'll see more of her as the video goes on. There's a Kelty Red Wing all suited up. It was in the back of the pickup on the drive up. Let's check our temperature. It is probably around 20 degrees. Wind picks up, it's going to get a lot colder. Got the GPS, hiking poles, first aid kit, all the other gear I showed you in the other video. Let's get going. We got a lot of work to do, and I'll be fighting uh, sundown because it gets dark early up here in the north. So, man, it's awesome. And the cool thing is, there's no one up here. No one comes up and do, does this. No one wants to come out in the hard conditions like this. Everyone holds up and starts watching their television. Not me. Let's go out in the woods. As usual, dogs waiting on me. Let's go, girl. Now, when I hike in the backcountry like this, even though we're not in a full-on survival situation, you'll see me kind of treated as such. Because I'm alone out here. I'm not in cell phone coverage. Yeah, I have a travel itinerary. And my wife knows right where I'm at. But, nevertheless, um, we could get in trouble back here. Especially working with those blades. We can't cut ourselves. We've got to be extra careful. And smart. This came up a huge embankment. That's why I'm breathing hard. I think it's funny when guys roll into my video projects and they go, Dude! You're breathing so hard, you're out of shape. And to that I say, where's your video, dude? You come out and do what I do. I don't see no videos. Break away from the video game controller long enough to go live some life, dude. A lot of armchair elitists out there. They think they know nothing fancy by watching one video. They don't know crap. It shows in their comments. Ali knows crap though, don't you, dog? Yeah, good girl. Okay, a little lesson on snowshoes. The snow's not very deep. We've had kind of a light snow year so far here in 2008, the end of 2008. Don't bring snowshoes if you don't need them. Uh, I already knew that there wasn't going to be a ton of snow up here, so I didn't bring them. I do have my snowflake baskets ready to go on my hiking poles if I need them. Uh, I see a lot of guys wearing snowshoes when they don't need to. When you wear snowshoes, uh, you're going to be working a lot harder. It's a lot more calories expended. And then when you start busting up through this brush that Allie and I are getting ready to ascend through on snowshoes, good luck. Uh, seriously, you better hope that snow is really deep so you can kind of avoid a lot of that brush. Um, but Allie and I are going to bust up right there. And I never put snowshoes on until I have no choice. And then I'll have them strapped to the back of my pack and then I transition to a snowshoe. Go on, go on, good girl. Good girl, go on, go on. Now, we go to this place, and this is a place I've been going since the 1980s, because it's awesome. Um, there's no trails that lead to it, and I like it that way. It makes it hard to get to. Uh, we're gonna take about four miles to get to it, too. Roughly, probably around three and a half is all, but it's long enough in winter conditions, trust me. It's a lot of work. Sit. Good girl, here we are. This is a knife clinic right here, boys. You've seen it before in summertime conditions. I told you we're gonna come back when it was snowy. Here we are. Look how foggy those hills are. They're not hills, there's mountains. If you look that way, there's a peak running about 10,000 feet, 11,000 feet. Look in my uh, nothing fancy knife clinic vid and you can see it. That's before I had a decent camera too. Now I got a better camera. One that's waterproof that I can film and stuff like this. Oh yeah, baby. This is awesome. Freaking awesome. I might go a little further up though. We might come back down here later on. Let's take a listen too. See how many people we got around us. Huh. Nobody. 
just the way we like it. Awesome. Okay, as we get deeper in the backcountry, the snow is deepening. Here we got about 10 inches, maybe 12 inches of snow. This is why you want to wear gaiters. Even if the snow's light or not that deep, always wear gaiters. Keeps that snow out of your boot and uh, keeps your feet warmer and drier. I never go in the backcountry without gaiters. Speaking of which, and uh, footwear, you might say, well, dude, why aren't you wearing hiking boots? Well, I've been doing this for a long time. And my feet need to stay warm. And so I go with a pack, kind of like the Sorel Uplands I told you about. I lose a little bit of the bottom foot protection. They don't have like a steel shank in them. They have a fiberglass shank, I think. And uh, not that great a foot support. But I am hiking on mostly snow now, so that's more cushioned. Not kind of like summer conditions where it's rocky. Therefore, um, I'm doing a little trade-off. I get more foot comfort, more foot warmth, and maybe a li little less ankle support. Uh, I've used them for many years and they work for me in these conditions. One of these days the manufacturers are going to make a boot that combines all the support of a hiking boot with a removable wool insole uh, and liner just like a Sorel. And that's what I'm waiting for. It's got to be a removable liner because when you start camping in conditions like this, dude, your feet are going to get freaking cold. Uh, and it's really hard to dry your boots out, if not impossible if you don't have a uh, removable liner. There's dog. By the way, that, come here dog. Come. This hood on Allie's rain jacket has been modified by me. I put stiffening closed cell foam in it and sewed it and then seam sealed it with a waterproof seam sealer. Uh, it didn't come like that. That way it's very stiff and she has a hood protector. You may say, well, why does your dog need that? Well, she doesn't need it. But it makes her life easier. I mean, she's busting through this snow-covered brush. She's shaking all the time, shaking snow off. By having that hood on it, it makes her life a lot more comfortable and easier. Again, this is by trial and error many years of hiking and this kind of stuff. It works. I like that yellow, too, because it makes it easier for me to keep track of her. Hi, dog. A little bit shallower through here. Let's go find us a, a bivouac site. It's not quiet. That is Alley. It's quiet, isn't it? Do you hear anything? I don't hear a thing. It's a beautiful day in the woods with the snow coming down. It's about 18 degrees now. We'll go check the thermal comp here in a second. I'm gonna build a survival lean-to shelter. That's what I'm hoping to make in the woods in the Rocky Mountains on this afternoon. Now, let's talk about site location. And again, I'm not the end-all expert for uh, survival. However, I got good common sense. I know how to build stuff, fairly mechanical. And, you know, being a graduate of military survival training, that helped a little bit. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of graduates of uh, all kinds of survival training courses that are idiots. They don't know what they're doing. I know, because I've gone out in the woods with them. And they forgot everything they were taught. Um, a lot depends on the individual. And just because someone's trained or not trained, uh, doesn't mean a lot to me. It boils down a lot more to the ingenuity and the, the, the drive that an individual has. There's been a lot of people stranded in conditions like this that did pretty much everything wrong. And they ended up surviving just fine. Now, let's talk about site location for the shelter. This is probably not the best location, but I don't have time to go hiking anymore miles up in the woods. I want to run out of daylight as it is. Um, these are non-combat shelters I'm going to be talking about. In other words, shelters that uh, I'm going to make in a non-combat situation. If I was in a combat or shoot-down situation, I would be uh, doing a lot different. And These are going to be two, my two trees for the lean-to. There's one support, there's another support, and let's talk about considerations. One is signaling. Um, this might not be the very best place to signal because as you can see I have tree canopy overhead Maybe my knife clinic would be better. I don't want to build there um, because I want to go a little bit more remote uh, The reason is is we're going to be stripping some live trees in the shelter building exercise. There's really no way around it um, to build a proper shelter uh, generally speaking to have adequate rain and snow coverage you're going to have to use some live limbs um, I do not recommend doing this. This is a survival exercise, and uh, you guys know what that means. In other words, I'm trying to teach, maybe demonstrate some survival skills that might help somebody in the future. 
but please don't go out in the woods and just do this for the heck of it. Um, there's going to be thousands of people that watch this, and I think that the limbs that uh, these little trees will give up will serve a good purpose and the greater good in that respect. Um, so again, that's that common sense environmentalism from nothing fancy. Let's take care of our woods as much as possible, but in this situation, I think Mother Nature is okay with us using just a little bit of it to provide a, make a shelter to teach and maybe help somebody help somebody out someday. Another consideration is that we're going to put our fire right here, but let's look up, and we don't want that fire melting that snow off and having it drop on the fire. So my fire is actually going to be right about here in the middle of this game trail, which I think it is. I'm not positive. That way as it goes up, it has more or less a sh straight shot up into the sky. That's one consideration. Another one is dead trees. Are there any dead trees uh, around this area here that could fall and kill you? And what do you know? There's one right there. See this guy? Dead. But on the good side, he's leaning heavily towards that way, which is north. Or, I'm sorry, westerly. And so I think we'll be okay with that. Let's see these guys. He looks kind of dead, too. They look kind of sturdy, though. They're not rotten. Seems pretty solid. So, basically just common sense stuff before you build your shelter. Um, singling is a requirement. Ideally, it'd be situated near an open area where we could have our single fire ready to go and light. Um, also, the snow boughs, deadfalls, and then two support branches. All right, so let's get going. We're going to start stripping these trees with our survival knife. Get them nice and clean. We'll make a horizontal support. And I think we'll have to decide which way it's going to open. Uh, I think it'll open towards me going to. Time to work, girlfriend. Okay. Oh, knee pads. They're coming in handy right now, huh? Kneeling in the snow. Uh, occasionally some armchair leaders will go, oh, knee pads are for idiots. Uh, they don't, again, know what they're talking about. They're the idiots. Come out in these snow conditions. We'll see how you do. Alright, let's check the thermo pump before we get going here. It's still about 20 degrees. It hasn't gone down yet. I like having Allie too, she's an awesome awesome watchdog. Any deer, bear come by, she'll she's alerted before. Allie, do you hear anything? Allie. Do you hear anything? When I tell her that it puts her on alert. If I really need her to alert, I'll peel that hood back so she can hear better. Good girl. Alright, let's start stripping this. Transition to your work gloves in this situation because they're going to be a lot more durable. It's funny, some guys will weigh in on some of my videos and go, dude, your gloves are new, your tactical gear's new. That's because I got more than one pair, dudes. I can wear them out. Nice safety, make sure you don't cut yourself. happy with how the SK-5 is cutting. It's hard for me to move the tripod around and get everything in frame, so sorry if I'm out of frame sometimes. It's just the way it's going to go. Now these limbs I'm stripping off, I'm not going to throw away. I'm going to use them as a part of my, my covering material on my lean-to, so they'll be useful. Okay, I'm going to choose this little sapling right here for my cross member for the lean-to. Again, some guys will say, dude, why don't you just find something dead? Um, actually, this one right here looks better. That one right there. Let's see which one I'm talking about. This one right here. Um, the reason I don't use dead is because I want a strong shelter. I don't want something that's going to uh, break on me after I, I, you know, cut it down. i got to make this thing strong. Who knows? And I'm simulating I might have to live in here for a couple weeks. I don't know. I'm going to get my spot knife to strip it. And to strip it, I'm going to use the Black Hawk to tang knife that you saw John Fitzgerald sharpen. Oh, yeah. It has a real Ford F2 
to it, this Tatang does. You know what, I'm not even going to use a saw for this. Let's just see how this Tatang chops it down. By the way, notice that just, <laughs> that snow comes dropping down. That's why you have the hood on. Gore-Tex, baby. Uh, let me turn this roof iron around. Right. Wish I had a cameraman. That would be awesome. Some of you guys will go, dude, why don't you have a cameraman? Nobody wants to come out here with me. Are you kidding me? Plus, our schedules are busy. But no one wants to come out in these conditions. Freaking want to stay on their video game paddles. Chop that stuff right here. Hopefully you can. Now, is it energy efficient to be doing it this way? Let me rotate it down like that. I'll tell you right now, it is not. It's a lot more energy efficient to be using your saw viver rather than... Um, zoom in. Hang on a sec. All right. I just stop and start it again. Talking about how energy efficient it is. It's not very energy efficient to be using your survival knife to chop a tree down with, even though there's a small tree. Now, that might that being said, this might be all that you have with you. And knowing that it can do the task is why I demonstrate it. You'd be better off to use your saw viver saw, which I've demoed in other videos many times. This little sapling though will fall pretty easily with a, a decent blade. By the way, always have your Gore-Tex on, man, because, let me zoom out on this, you're going to have snow dropping on you like all the time, because as you build your shelter, it's going to come down right on top of you, so I always have a hood on, I have my fleece gloves off now, and they're in my jacket, once I drape down my right arm to stay warm, here's one glove, here's the other glove, inside my jacket. That way when I take them off and I'm ready for them, they're warm and ready to go. Uh, Black Hawk to Tang, it chopped pretty well. I was impressed with it. Let's use it to strip this tree off. This is our cross member we're using for the um, lean-to. And again, guys, sorry for the, the vid, man. Uh, it's me and a tripod and Dogness. It's Dogness being my mountain dog, Allie. Keeping vigil right there. What's your deal? Got that look. Like, let's go do something. I hate standing here. Alright. Now, remember on my uh, extended stay video for my uh, backpacking gear, I told you guys to lanyard your stuff. This is really when it starts paying off. I mean, I've got my saw viver here, and I don't have a lanyard on it, nor would I have one on this, but it's good to know where your stuff is. Um, you can lose it in the snow real easy if you're not careful. Been there, done that. A lot. For as light as it is, this Benchmade, I'm sorry, it's not Benchmade, but Blackhawk Tatang, is actually doing pretty good. Because it is rather light. Save all these trimming. There we go. There's a cross right there. 